Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Nick Lynch and welcome back to the channel. This week I have been reading the book The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. This book has been recommended to me by a number of people. It is an older book, so some of the things are not as applicable as they perhaps once were. Still, let's dive in. This book is recommended for anyone who is looking to start a small business, particularly where they would be the owner operator of this business. In cases like this, the book describes this as not having a business, but having a job and possibly the worst job in the world. After a little bit of teasing by the author of naming the product and the system within the book, he does actually go on to describe the system itself. It did take a little while to get there. And the idea is to work on your business, not in your business. So allow me to explain. Instead of straight away setting up your business and getting things up and running where you do whatever it is you might be doing, you might be some kind of graphic design artist, you might be a baker, before you start, go out there and just baking, 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 getting customers, getting customers, you want to take a step back and look at the whole organization that you're looking to create from the start. So this involves figuring out how large you would like your organization to get. It could be a few hundred people. It could have an office in every major city. That's up to you. And there's nothing wrong with having a medium sized business. It doesn't have to always be a huge business. Once you've had this time imagining what size you want the business, you would then run through all the positions that you believe would be important within that organization. And you would create an organizational chart or an org chart, sometimes it's called. You would then go through each position in that org chart and you would decide on what their responsibilities would be and what tasks and processes are reliant on that person. Then you would fill these in as you go, making sure that it's listed, all these responsibilities are listed next to that particular person. Then starting at the ground level of people actually on say the factory floor or, or the baking floor, you would fill that position yourself and you would work that position and figure out exactly what processes and what tasks are need to be done. And then you would make a detailed standard operating procedure manual on how to do each of those tasks. So nothing is left up to the individual to decide. They are going through processes that have been put in place by yourself. And you know these processes will work because you've actually done that job. Once you've put together all the information and SOPs for the person who is going to be replacing you at that ground level position, you would then go ahead and hire someone into that position then moving yourself up to the manager of, of that person, where again, you would then start to map out all the processes and responsibilities of that position into a standard operating procedure. And then once you've done that and mastered that position, you can then move on to a different position and hire someone in to take the position you previously just held. And then you would go through every single position in the organization, assuming you have the technical capabilities to do those positions and then you would fill in standard operating procedures so you're building a system that people can work with without you actually being there so the book goes on to say that the people you're looking to hire into these positions ideally would have no experience in the area and would be and would be open to new ideas so they're not locked into a particular way of thinking the reason being you're expecting this person to rely on the standard operating procedures you put in place and the processes you put in place rather than bringing any baggage or preconceived ideas of what is expected in that position from another company into your position so ideally you're looking for people with no experience and are willing to be trained up into the processes and once you have created these systems for every single position, you would then move yourself out of the company and simply observe it from the outside as it is hopefully being profitable. And you would just then collect the money at the end. You may want to go through these positions again, starting from the bottom every two years or so, just to, to see if the market has changed, to see if new innovation needs to be put in. But I'll get over onto that in just a second. In the book, this is described as setting up a prototype franchise model. So all the systems and processes are in place. So in theory, if you wanted to, you could simply sell all these processes and systems to someone else who could then start up their own site, their own uh, version of the business, and it would run smoothly and they could hire people in. He's not recommending doing franchising specifically in this book, but it's just saying that having all these things in place allow you to cookie cutter this uh, business and place it somewhere else and have someone come in to run it so you don't need to be there on site, which is the biggest problem is having to oversee everything all the time if you are working in the business rather than working on the business. So the business works even if you go on holiday, business works even if you retire, the business works if you decide to go and start another business. So it's always there running in the background with people who know what to do in every situation that will present itself. So this could be great if you're working in say a restaurant or perhaps a hotel, something where one day is often like another and it's quite a repetitive pattern of things going on. The only thing I think could be lacking in this particular way of doing things is bring innovation into the system or into the systems. So unless it's automatically 
renewed by a higher level of management every year or two as the technology in the market moves on there may be expectations from customers that are not present in the old systems that are in place or there could be innovations in technology which would streamline the process of some of these systems but hadn't originally existed when their systems were already created so how that is dealt with isn't really mentioned in the book it's just you set up your systems and you let it run so that's quite at odds with another book that I recently read called Shorter by Alex Sujong Kim Pang. This book talks about trying to be more efficient in processes in themselves. So getting employees to actually come up with ideas on how to increase efficiencies and work more effectively. So this seems very at odds with the e-myth, which is the idea of people just run the systems that are in place, whereas the book Shorter puts the emphasis on the ground level employees to come up with better systems, better processes to manage their time and get more done in less time. I'm sure there's room for both these types of philosophies in different types of businesses. So perhaps more standardized businesses would benefit from the e-myth, such as fast food restaurants and that kind of thing. And the more creative businesses may benefit from shorter, where it comes from a bottom-up approach to innovation. So that's a rough overview of some of my thoughts about the book The E-Myth. If you'd like to check out another video of mine on the four-day work week, those can be found here. Ish, possibly here.